will begin this workshop with a very simple lab. So we call it Blinky because this is what we're going to do. We're going to blink uh, LED, so toggle uh, LED on the discovery kit. And so this will be a good way to make sure that your software, your firmware and your drivers and your board also, the hardware is working fine. So let's get started. So the objective of this lab is going to first to get familiar with the STM32U083C Discovery Kit, so DK. So this is the development board that we'll use for this uh, workshop. And so we learn also how to use the STM32 Cube ID and to generate a project and then add some code, so application code, and test the Blinky. So in this lab, we will configure PA5 as an output push-pull. And uh, we will, uh, so this is the IO that is connected to the blue LED and we'll toggle it. So we'll write zero and one in the, you know, the register of this IO in order to toggle the LED. First, we will open stm 32 cube ID. So this is our STID for stm 32 So to open it, so you can double click on the icon on your desktop or you can find it from the start menu. All right, so this is the icon. This is my icon, at least here on my desktop. So I'm going to double click on it. This will open stm 42 cube ID. So the first thing, we're going to select a workspace. So the workspace, um, we're going to create a workspace just for this workshop. So stm 42 u 0 underscore workshop. Like this, you will have all your labs that will be in one workspace. So that could be uh, very convenient. So let's do that. You see, so you just change that and put sm 2 u 0 underscore workshop and then launch. After a couple of seconds, you should have this window right here, your splash window for stm 2 cube ID. And now we're going to create a project. So to create a new project, so as you can see, you can start from here. So there is an icon right there. Or you can also go File, New, STM32 Project. So try one of those two. And let's create a project. So you might see some windows where, you know, some database have been downloaded by the tool. So this can take maybe like uh, one minute. Uh, to update the database of the tool. Uh, so once this is done, you will see this window right here. So we are going to select a part number, so commercial part number. So it will be in the MCU MPU selector of the window. And we will select the STM32U083MC T6. So this is the microcontroller that is on your discovery kit that you're using. This is a LQFP80 pin with 256 kilobytes of flash and 40 kilobytes of RAM. So MCU MPU selector, commercial part number, select or enter the STM32U083MCT6. Now select the part number right here. So this gives you a description about the microcontroller that is used on this disk kit. And now, so you can find a little bit more detail right there. And some links also to, for example, this, uh, I don't know, the specification of the product, the reference manual, uh, the CAD resource, um, everything that you can uh, find about this microcontroller you see the block diagram right there. So that's very convenient. Okay, so once you have selected the commercial part number right here, click Next. Now give a name to your project. So project name. And let's call it Blinky, for example. You can, of course, choose the name you want. Uh, but here, so I'm going to name it Blinky. And then click on Finish. We are going to change the perspective. So we're going to switch 
to a new perspective, which is the device configuration tool perspective. So to do this, please click on yes. After a couple of seconds, the IOC file, so this is, you know, the IOC file is basically uh, the graphical interface uh, file, you know, where you're going to configure here your microcontroller using this nice graphical interface. So this is what we call our STM32 CubeMX, you know, interface. And this is associated to an IOC file. So that's what you see right here in your project. So in this graphical interface, in the pinout and configuration tab, we are going to first look for PA5. So PA5 is the IO that we want to configure as output push-pull, so output, uh, G so GPIO output, basically, for mode. And uh, what we're going to do is first look for it on the package. So we have a little magnifier right there that can help us to locate a pin. So we'll enter PA5, enter, and this will tell us where it is on the package. And then once we identify it, we will click on it and we'll select GPIO output mode. All right, so in STM32 CubeID, make sure that you have selected the pinout and configuration tab right here. Now, so this is where we want to enter PA5. We're looking for PA5 on the package. So enter PA5, this highlights where it is on your package. So right here, PA5. Now left click and we will select the mode GPIO output for this pin. All right, so now it's green. So that means it has been configured. And as you can see, it's configured as a GPIO output. Now we're going to move to the clock configuration. So we're going to set the clocks and set the speed of the STM32 U0. So in, so we have a clock configuration tab. So we click on that. This is the clock tree of the STM32 U0. And basically, uh, so you can select the different source for clocking you know, your device or your core and then your peripherals, uh, the flash and so on. So we'll select the MSI in uh, 48 megahertz mode and then we'll select it, you know, to clock the system clock, which is the HCLK. So it should be 48 megahertz. Click on clock configuration tab right here. This is your clock tree. And we said we're going to select the MSI. So this is an internal clock of the SM32 U0. You can select different speed and we'll run it at the max speed, which is 48 megahertz. And now in your clock mux, you're going to select the MSI. Okay. Now, as you can see, we are running at 48 megahertz from the MSI. Now it's time to generate the code. To do this, you can click on projects and then generate code. Or you can also click on the icon that is directly on the menu bar of your STM32 uh, cube ID. So this is the gear right there. Or just simply you save your project and that will generate the code. So it will ask you then, once it's generated, to change perspective because we're going to go to a C and C++ perspective where we can add some code. Let's generate the code to do this. So this is the icon I was telling you about. You see here the little gear. Uh, so you can use that or you can use project and generate code. Or simply in the future, you can just, you know, file save so when you save your project this will actually directly generate the code but let's use you know the first method project generate code change perspective yes after a couple of seconds 
your project has been generated. So this is your project right here from the Project Explorer window. So if we explore a little bit, this is the includes. Those are the core files right there with the includes and the source files. So .h and .c plus a .s that will be the startup file right here. All the drivers, so our HAL drivers are going to be located here. And also the SIMSYS drivers. So this is it. The IOC file, so we talk about it. So if you click back on IOC file, this will open again the SM32 CubeMX graphical interface. LD, so this is your linker file right there. What we want to do is, okay, so we already have the main.c. If you don't have main.c open, please double click on it. And this is where we're going to be adding some code in order to blink the LED. Okay, as a reminder, for every labs, we have created a file called code to be added or code to add workshop.txt. In this file, you will find all the code that we ask you to add, you know, in the different labs. So you will find, for example, for this lab, these two lines of code in order, you know, to blink the LED in the while loop. Or of course, you know, like you can just type it yourself. So it's just like two lines of code that we want to add in this code section right there. So in the while loop between the user code begin while and user code end while. So just um, a little uh, explanation about these sections. You find, you know, this uh, user code uh, sections in the different files that we provide. If you add your code inside these uh, sections, so commented sections right here, this will preserve your code uh, and not delete it next time you generate code again from Cubemx. So this will basically preserve your user code. So make sure that you add the code within these user code sections. Okay, so in main.c, you're going to scroll down. This is your main function. Hal init, so this is where we reset all the peripherals and initialize the flash interface and the systic. The system clock configuration, so that's where we, uh, for example, remember we run at 48 megahertz from MSI. So if you go open the creation, you will see that we use MSI and we also set the different prescalers. Okay, going back to the main function, we have our mx underscore gpio init function. So if you go to decoration, so you can you see select, right click, open decoration. Uh, this will bring you to where we are configuring PA5 as output PP, so push pull. Going back to your main function, we now have the while loop, and this is where we're going to add the code to toggle PA5. So we're going to uh, use a function from our HAL library. So it starts by HAL underscore GPIO. So this is a GPIO driver that is basically included in your drivers right here. So we see all the drivers. So we have a driver for the uh, GPIO, and this is one of the functions that we provide. So as a parameter, you give so the port, so GPIO A, and then which pin, so GPIO 5. Then we add a delay, so there is a HAL delay using the C-stick, so this is in milliseconds. So basically, every 100 milliseconds, we will toggle PA5. It's time to build your project. So there is an icon right there. You see the little hammer. So you can click on that, or you can do also do a project and build. Uh, this will basically uh, compile and link your project, and generate the different files for debug. So let's do this. 
to build a project. So this is the icon right there. You see the little icon, hammer, or you can also project and build all. Let's click on it. So make sure actually your uh, project has been selected and then built in the output console right here. You will see all the different files being compiled. And then you will see also the link face to generate all the files. And then you have a summary about you know your project in terms of size. So text that will be your size in flash. And then the data, you know, the data and the BSS. So this is what is will be in the RAM. Make sure that you have zero error. And maybe you have some warnings, but at least zero errors. To prepare for the next stage, which is uh, debugging, so we'll test our code. So let's talk about the hardware setup. So we're going to use uh, your board. So this is the stm 2 u 0 disk kit. Now we're going to use this connector there. So you're going to connect a USB cable to this connector to your host machine. So make sure that you are using CN1, so ST-Link CN1 connector and not the user USB cable. So this is completely different. So we'll use that in a future uh, lab, which is for USB, but uh, this is not the case for this lab. For this lab, we'll connect this connector right there, connect it to your ST-Link, that is actually this guy right there. And the ST-Link is connected to the stm 2 u 0 on your board. Then we'll use these LEDs right there, the user LEDs. So we'll use one of them, so the blue LED to uh, toggle the LED. So connect your USB cable to your host machine. As you hear, the ST-Link has been enumerated by your host. So it will be recognized as a ST debugger, so ST-Link. And also it comes as a COM port. So if you want to do some uh, like logging, printfs, looking at that, you can connect your ST-Link to the UART pins uh, of the ST-Link uh, to your microcontroller, and you can have some debug capability using printf. Okay, so make sure that your kit has been connected to your host machine and enumerated properly. You can check the drivers, you know, in the device manager, for example, to make sure that uh, everything is okay regarding the drivers. And the next step is going to uh, be for us to enter the debug session. Debug session, so you have a little icon right there, which is the, this little green bug, as you can see. Uh, you can click on that and that will permit to launch a debug session. So you will have a window like this and you will press OK. OK, to enter the debug session. So first of all, make sure your project is selected. So make sure So you go here and left click on it. And now you're going to click on debug, you see. So just click on the icon. This will open this window right there. So this is your debug window. If you go in the debugger section, you see that the ST-Link has been selected by default. And the rest has been set up properly for your STM32 project. So to debug uh, STM32, so debug your STM32 U0 discovery kit. So you can just click OK. Now, if it's the first time you do that, so what is going to happen is that the tool, the stm 2 cube ID, is going to communicate to the ST-Link and find what version is used for the ST-Link, what version of the firmware is used. If there is a new version, it will ask you if you want to upgrade or update your ST-Link. So yes, we want to do that and it's highly recommended always to use the latest firmware for the ST-Link. So let's update it. So you click yes. Now you have a window like this. So this is ST-Link v2.1. 
that is on your discovery kit and we're going to open the update mode okay now we have a choice so as you can see there is a new version indeed and we can upgrade Now it's updated, upgrade successful. You can close this window and we're going to debug again. So click on debug blinky right there, or like the icon. And we'll do it again. Now the firmware is updated on your ST-Link. And now we're entering a debug session. So we're going to change perspective to enter the debug session. So switch. And we are now in the debug session. To run the project, there is an icon right here, as you can see. So it's an arrow like green. So this is to run the project. So let's click on it and now you should see your blue LED that blinks uh, very fast actually every 100 milliseconds on your board so this is great you can now suspend so this will stop the execution of your code you can now terminate so this will exit the debug session and what we can do is because we are done basically with this project, we can right click on it and we're going to clean the project. So this would remove all the files that have been created when uh, we build the project. And what we can do now is also we can close the project. And that's it. So we are done with our first lab.